Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, the second joyful mystery that we reflect upon today is the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth, and our theme is joy. Pope Francis begins his encyclical letter, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, with this statement. The joy of the gospel fills the hearts and lives of all who encounter Jesus. This joy summarizes the Christian life. It is our signature, it is our identity. It is something unique to all who receive Jesus in faith. And Mary did receive him through her fiat. Later on we see in the Gospel of Luke how the shepherds return home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them about the newborn Savior, Jesus. However, the nature of joy is that it first grows within the person, it affects the whole person, and then it goes out. True joy cannot be contained within the person. Every authentic experience of truth and goodness seeks by its very nature to grow within us says Pope Francis in the same encyclical letter, paragraph 9. And then he continues, goodness always tend to spread. Yes, joy and goodness radiate around us to other people. The encounter with Jesus and the resultant joy cannot but be shared with others. This is what happened to Mary, our mother. And she, going in haste to Elizabeth, is the prototype of each Christian. She is joyfully heading to Judea, to Elizabeth, to share the experience of her encounter with angel Gabriel at Annunciation. That visit is all about her calling. It was not just about serving and supporting Elizabeth, but was about the person of Jesus, whose mother she became. Thus Christian joy has a missionary dimension of reaching out to others and to share the same joy. As the Holy Father continues in the same encyclical in paragraph 27, he says, One who encounters Christ will have a missionary impulse, reaching out to others to share his or her joy and transforming everything else. Here we see that not only Mary carries within her the joy that she experienced in her encounter with the divine, but her very words also become a canticle of joy, as we see in the Magnificat. Christians rejoice because they are able to magnify the presence of the Lord within, no matter what the circumstances turn out to be. The experience of the first Christians who were able to win the favor of all people, as we read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 247, had the same experience of joy, even amidst the persecutions. It was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that made it happen. Indeed, ultimately joy is the gift from God through the Holy Spirit. That's why in his letter to Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22, St. Paul says, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4.4. 4. The question is, are you, am I a joyful person? It is our encounter with Jesus. It is in Jesus Christ that Christians rejoice. So let's pray that we find our Christian joy in encountering Jesus in our daily lives and for the grace to share that joy with others. May Mary, our mother, whom we honor through this rosary devotion, intercede for us. Amen.